Hi, my name is Dr. Anthony Lemaire, and I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. Today we're going to talk about surgical drainage of the pericardial space, otherwise known as pericardial windows. Before we get started though, let's define a pericardial effusion and also go over the anatomy of the pericardium. Pericardial fluid is fluid that surrounds the heart. It's classically somewhere between 15 and 50 milliliters of fluid. Now, the fluid actually serves several functions. Number one, it provides lubrication. Number two, it actually keeps the heart in its place within the chest. And number three, it functions as a barrier to infection and inflammatory issues of the surrounding organs. Now, the pericardium is defined as a two-membrane, two-layered membrane that surrounds the heart. There's an outer membrane, which consists of a fibrinous layer, and there's an inner layer that actually has two layers. It's an inner serous layer. In between the two serous layers is where the pericardial fluid stays. Now, when there's a lot of fluid, it actually can cause symptoms. Patients classically describe shortness of breath, chest pain or pressure, or often just not feeling well. Now, there are several reasons why people get this extra fluid. Number one could be neoplastic or cancer. Number two could be infection. And number three can be an inflammatory response or inflammatory issue. Now, let's go over what happens when someone has a pericardial window. First, the patient will get to the operating room. They'll go to sleep. Once they're asleep, they're prepped and draped for surgery. We'll take a scalpel, and then we'll make an incision by the xiphoid process. Here we have an anatomy. We have the model of the human body. And here is the sternum. This is the manubrium, the body of the sternum, and the lower end of the sternum is referred to as the xiphoid process, which is right there. What we do in the operating room is we'll take a scalpel and we'll make an incision right above the xiphoid process. Then we'll take some instruments and we'll completely free up the tissue that surrounds the xiphoid. We'll grab the xiphoid process and then we'll resect it. With the xiphoid process moved away, below the xiphoid is actually where the pericardium in the heart is. We'll able to see the pericardium, grab the pericardium, and then we'll open it up. Once we open up the pericardium, the fluid comes out. What we try to do is make that hole in the pericardium very large. And that hole, by the way, is the window to the heart. With the window or hole being open and large, the fluid can freely remo be removed. Once the fluid is removed, we make sure there's no bleeding issues or any other issues. And then what we'll do is we'll put a drain inside the pericardial space. That drain classically stands about 48 hours. With the drain in place, we then close the incision. The patient often is woken up after surgery and they go to the recovery room. Now, after surgery, the patient will have the drain for about 48 hours or so. The drain comes out in the operating, the drain comes out in the patient's room by just being pulled out. And the patient will then be able to go home usually the next day. So they stay in the hospital approximately two to three days. Now, we do these operations all the time, but there are risks involved. There's risk of infection, there's risk of bleeding, there's even a risk of death. All of these risks are low. The risk of bleeding and, and infection is about 1%, and the risk of death is less than 1%. Now, this operation classically actually only lasts about 10 minutes, but the patient's in the room for about an hour if you include the time they come in and go to sleep and wake up afterwards. Okay. Now, this is a general description of a pericardial window. If you have any additional questions, please let me know. Thank you very much.